right. Well, today's topic is going to be on six warning signs on suicide. And this is a very real problem that many people are experiencing. And, you know, one of the things about suicide is that it's one of those misnomers that nobody wants to talk about. It's one of those topics that are people are like saying, yeah, yeah, we know suicide is happening. We know these things are happening all around us, but nobody wants to take the time to address it and pursue it and understand the reasoning, A, why it's happening, and B, what we can do about it. And you see, I think we can do a lot of things about it. So let's uh, get right into that. First of all, the title of my message is Six Warning Signs of Suicide. Six Warning Signs. And let's just get right into it. Facts and stats. For middle-aged high schoolers and youth ages, um, youth ages 12 through 18, suicide is the second leading cause of death. For college age youth ages 18 through 22, suicide is the second leading cause of death. Overall, suicide is the second leading cause of death for our youth ages 10 through 24. You know what? One young person commits suicide every 10 minutes in America, in the world. And, uh, you know, it's like they want to, they want to end their lives, not because they're afraid of dying. They want to end their lives because they're afraid of living. They're afraid of living. And they think living would be a major problem and dying would be so much better. Well, let's continue to think about this. Um, I like to think about a couple warning signs, personality changes, Unchangeable mood set, uh, mood swings, undeniable uh, or isolation, self neglect, risky behavior, hopelessness, and um, really, these are a couple ideas. When you see suicide warning signs, I think that we ought to suicide. If someone's saying, "Yeah, um, I've been thinking about suicide, and and I'm a burden to people, or I'm I'm experiencing unbearable pain, or they're talking about killing themselves, or feeling trapped, or having no reason to live," that's a major, major problem. If you see behavior, increased use of alcohol or drugs, withdrawal from activities, giving away prized possessions, that's a major sign. Isolating from friends and family, looking for a way to kill themselves, such as searching online for materials or means, sleeping too little or too much, visiting or calling people to say goodbye, acting recklessly and aggression. And if you notice people's moods, depression, loss of interest, irritability, anxiety, humility, uh, humiliation, these things are uh, all warning signs, common signs of suicidal thoughts, focusing on or talking about death and dying, having difficult mood swings and or verbalizing distress, making plans, including updating one's will, giving any possessions, gathering needed materials such as pills or a gun, not engaging in activities that were once enjoyable, isolating oneself from loved ones and or parents or friends, acting recklessly, including using, misusing drugs or alcohol, saying goodbye. If you know anyone who's showing these signs, you can encourage them to seek help about thinking about helping them with possible suicide. Common signs of chronic stress, negative thinking. It's a common sign. Feeling anxious, loss of interest in things, increased relationship conflict, irritability, poor concentration and confusion, poor or disrupted sleep, clenching or grinding teeth. That's, that's an unusual sign there. Changes in appetite, experiencing weight loss or weight gain and chest pain. That I've found... Some people have asked me, Tony, do, can believers commit suicide? And I, I would say it is possible for a true believer to commit suicide. Uh, that is an unusual occurrence, but it is possible. Someone considering suicide should be challenged above all to remain or keep himself to see whether he is in the faith. Okay, suicide warning signs, depression, previous suicide attempt, increasing use of alcohol or drugs. Withdrawing from social contact, feeling hopeless about a situation. You know, we, we've gone over that pretty good. So let's get into the six warning signs that are obviously happening with people. And uh, six warning signs. And so I would like to say, number one, people who are committing or attempting suicide are depressed. This is without question. The most common reason people die by suicide is because of a se severe depression. I'm not talking about discouragement. I'm not talking about a demoralization. I'm not talking about having a bad experience. I'm talking about 
Clinical depression oftentimes will lead to suicide. Number one warning sign is that they are depressed. Number two, they are psychotic. People who commit suicide have a malevolent inner voices often command self-destruction for unintelligible reasons. Psychosis is much harder to mask than depression and is arguably even more tragic. The worldwide incidences of schizophrenia is is 1% and often strikes otherwise healthy, high-performing individuals whose lives, though manageable with medication, are often derailed from their original promise. Schizophrenia is just as likely to talk freely about the voices commanding them to kill themselves as not. And also, in my, so in this article that has given me some inf information, people who are treated for schizophrenia to be able to function uh, oftentimes don't have problems with suicide. Number three warning sign is they are impulsive. Yes, that's right. They're impulsive. And um, you see, these people have a uh, tendency to want to use drugs or alcohol. Some people become uh, impulsively attempt to end their lives, own lives. And, uh, and, and not uh, substance abuse is often one of the major things that they use that will lead them to attempting suicide. Fourth warning sign for a person who wants to commit suicide is that they are crying out for help. They're crying out for help and they don't know how else to get it. They do want to alert, they don't want to die, but they do want to alert those around them that something is seriously wrong. You know, more girls attempt suicide than guys because they get discouraged, they get depressed, they get hurt from having immoral relationships, and then they find out that the person doesn't love them, and so they attempt suicide. More guys complete suicide than girls attempt suicide. So we have girls attempting suicide, but not completing it more often than guys completing suicide, but less attempting to complete uh, to, to have suicide. So girls are attempting to do suicide more than guys are. And uh, oftentimes it's because of living an immoral relationship and uh, these relationships they have, uh, you know, just leads them to uh, recklessness in their lives. Fifth warning sign is they have a philosophical desire to die. You know, in our age today, youth in Asia is a real practice going on silently. And as a believer in Christ, youth in Asia would be something that is against what the scripture says, that we preserve and respect and honor life at all costs. Why? Because man is created in the image of God. And you see, man's created in the image of God. So we shouldn't allow death to have victory over killing what God has created. And number six, Aaron's there, uh, they made a mistake. Oftentimes, young people become discouraged because they made a mistake. And uh, they feel like, I can't get over this. Um, uh, they feel like, you know, no one cares about me. I made a mistake. I'm just in trouble with everyone. And the easiest way to solve this problem is suicide. You see, suicide always leaves in the lives of those left behind more deep and, and more pain and uh, hurting others uh, more than what they would do if they stayed um, and, and did not commit suicide. Well, you know, we are looking at these six areas and we're going to go over a couple risk factors on all these six areas and what's going on with them. And uh, I'd just like to say that if you have the Lord Jesus in your life and you have the Lord as your Savior and you would like to ask the Lord Jesus to be your Savior, then you don't have to experience these problems of suicide or attempting suicide. The Lord Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Word of God will give you great grace and help you every day. Because, you know, we're all experiencing problems with life. We all experience discouragement. We all can see the bad side of things. But, you know, really what we really need to do is we need to encourage ourselves in the great things of the grace of God. See, the Lord Jesus loves us. He wants to help us and he wants to give us grace every day. And you see, we don't have to go through these crazy ideas of suicide or attempting suicide. No, we don't. We can have a time of victory over these ideas if we would just put the Lord first and ask the Lord Jesus as our Savior. And friend, maybe you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior today. I'd like to encourage you to call on the Lord and invite him into your life. And you can ask him to be your savior today. How? 
That's why Jesus died on the cross. He shed his blood for our sins and rose again from the grave. And if you would ask the Lord Jesus to come in your heart today, he'll come in your life. He'll change you. He'll give you living desires. He'll give you grace and he'll forgive you of any sin that you've done wrong. And friend, if you've never done that, I'd like to encourage you here today to call on the Lord and invite him into your life. You can do that through simple time of prayer, just by inviting the Lord Jesus to come in your life. Well, I would like to finish up with, you know, all these ideas of suicide and what's going on with them. And, uh, you know, we see it all around us, friends, loved ones, uh, young people, and uh, we don't have to allow it to happen. We can take control and have victory.